With Year 9 being announced and finally in the test server, you need to know all of the different attachments and how to run them with most of them being reworked with the new season. First of all, let's go over all of the changes to the scopes. Before the new season, the scopes were classified into no scope, 1x scope, 1.5 scope, 2x scope, 2.5 time scope and 3x scopes. With the new year update, this classification system changed. Now you have the iron sight, you have all of the 1x sights that were in the game, these didn't change at all. You have the magnified scopes, or 2.5 for short, and then you have the telescopic scopes, or the 3.5s. It's simplified more to a better point of understanding, and each classification of scope comes with its own buffs and nerfs that are new to the game. The iron sight, or having no sight, makes you ADS 10% faster on all weapons you have it equipped, although it's on some guns way harder to see people and not worth running. The 1x scopes makes you ADS 5% faster, and most if not all of these scopes with center dots in the middle of them got thicker center dots so it's a little bit harder for you to see people which makes it much easier for you to run to different scopes instead of just having a hollow A meta. The 2.5 or magnified scopes or the old A cogs are way more zoomed in, which can make close range gunfights way more challenging. And as you can see the old 1.5 time scope casing is also a newly added A cog. It does the 2.5 times zoom, it just looks like the old ACOG with slightly thicker insides. And then finally we have the telescopic scopes, or the 3.5 times scopes for short, which are even more zoomed in, making close range gunfights nearly impossible, but providing long angles and long gunfights way easier and way more efficient. And as you can see the old 2x scope casing is now one of the 3.5 times scope casings along with the old 3x casing, which is now the telescopic B sight. With no 1.5 time scope or 2x scope zooms on any scope casing at all, gunfights become a lot harder and more strategic, which is what the game should have been and needed in the first place, and I'm honestly glad this was implemented into the game, because now there's no scope that you can take that works for every single gunfight no matter where you are, which makes it to where there's certain operators that are just broken. This is really problematic in the game in the first place, because you had people picking operators like Warden specifically for the scope and not at all for the gun. But with that out of the way, let's go over the gun grips. Now as you can see, there are a few changes. You have the vertical grip, which didn't change at all, it just reduces the overall vertical recoil of weapons. Then they have the newly added horizontal grip, which makes you ADS faster. But wait, wasn't this the old angle grip's job? Well, it was. But now the angle grip just makes you reload faster, which has its own unique and uses that are pretty fun on some weapons, and I'll go over that later. Now finally, let's go over the barrel attachments. None of these got changed, but just because it's an ultimate attachments guide, I'll just briefly go over them anyways. The flash hider makes vertical recoil much easier to control, similar to the vertical grip on the grip section, and it hides the flash of bullets coming out of your gun. The compensator reduces the recoil of bullets horizontally instead of vertically like the flash hider. It's essentially the perpendicular opposite of what the flash hider is. It's much more useful for console players as controlling horizontal recoil on a joystick is much harder than a mouse. Next is the muzzle brake. This barrel greatly reduces the recoil of the first bullet out of your gun every time you spray from your gun. It's great for single shot firing for this reason, as logically speaking it would then reduce the recoil of every shot that you take as long as there's no bullets after. But that's not its only use. There's some weapons where the first one to two bullets are much harder to control than the rest of the magazine, like Jaeger's gun, or sometimes Finca LMG, or the R4C, which is why some people have adapted to putting it on their gun as well. Next is the suppressor. This makes the gun barrel much quieter and takes away the directional indicator of your enemy's screen so they don't know where they're getting shot from on their HUD. Great for using in smokes, like on people like Glass who shoot through smokes, or people like Warden SMG, and on low recoil weapons for multi kills because they can't give a call out on somebody where they don't know where they're getting shot from. Last but certainly not least is the extended barrel. This attachment is very simple, it just slightly increases the damage of every bullet that comes out the gun. It's good for shotguns or on high damage, low rate of fire weapons that you're holding angles with. It's pretty nice, but only on some certain weapons. Now with the barrel attachments gone, let's go over some new content from this season, which is the under barrel laser. Now this isn't new, they just completely reworked it. What this used to do is reduce the hit fire bloom of bullets while giving you a laser that you and enemies could see. 
Now, it makes ADS speeds quicker, which in combination with other attachments can be great for certain loadouts where you're just ADSing very, very fast. But now that we briefly go on over all of the attachments and their classifications respectively, let's talk about when to use all of them for what weapons and what situations. First of all, if you're running an SMG with low to medium recoil, somebody like Warden's MPX or Mozzie's P10 Roni, I'd recommend running a 1x scope or iron sights on certain guns if they have good iron sights like Bandit's MP7 with horizontal grip and flash hiders specifically, or a compensator if you're on console. I find that extended barrel damage doesn't mean much when you're using a gun class meant to hit heads anyways, and suppressors don't ever do much either because you can still pretty easily hear and see where you're getting shot from. Instead, use the flash hider to get more consistent with your aim much easier, and reduce the recoil so you have the ability to safely run the horizontal grip and lower magnification scopes for your ADS time. SMGs naturally are great for swinging people, so an attachment class that allows you to do this is amazing. However, if you're one of the operators that has an SMG with the ability to run an ACOG, this is what I recommend. Run your preferred ACOG, whether it be the A, B, or C. Then run it with a vertical grip and a flash hider, or again, a compensator if you're on console. Because of how magnified your scope is, the recoil is harder to control because of the nature of what the scope does, and these two attachments will make the recoil seem like you're running a 1x scope, and it's much more consistent and easy to aim with, and you can get much better use out of the 2.5 that you're trying to spawn peak or hold angles with. However, let's move on from SMGs. If you're running an AR, which honestly is more common on attack and SMGs are more common on defense besides that, then here's what I recommend. 2.5 times scopes, if it allows it, with flash hider and vertical grip, for the same reason you run those two attachments with the 2.5 on the SMGs on defense. Optionally, if the gun has little recoil, like let's say Sledge's AR for example, you can run the horizontal grip for ADS speed, because as an attacker when you're swinging things, you're going to need that sometimes. Moving on to DMRs, run any of the 2.5 times scopes or on longer range maps, run the 3.5 times scopes. Maps like Bank or Night Haven Labs are great examples. Because of how much recoil there is, due to the nature of these scopes, running vertical grip is almost a must have, while running muzzle brake is going to make the rest of the recoil go completely away almost as if you were running an AR. If it's a low recoil DMR and you're not running a telescopic scope, you can get away with a horizontal grip or an angled grip as well. You don't really need the vertical if you get good at running DMRs. If you're however running a shotgun, you should run iron sights, laser, and if there's an option for it, horizontal grip. Shotguns don't really need to worry about recoil or sight attachments that much, so make sure you're running what you can for added ADS speed because it's the only actual statistic that you will actually use on a shotgun that is very, very useful. Useful. Moving on though, there are a different subclass of shotguns that I wanted to briefly go over, the slug shotguns. This will completely depend on which slug shot you're running, so I'll go over all of them right now. If you're running the TCSG on either Cade or Goyo, you should run a 25 times scope, or optionally a 1x, with a vertical grip and a suppressor. If you're running the ACS-12 on either Alibi, Maestro, or Azami, you should run the 25 times scope with the vertical grip, pretty similar to the TCSG. And then finally we have the Boss G. Now, for this one, it's a bit weird, but let me explain. You want to run the angled grip, the laser, and then a 1x scope or a 2.5 times scope. Now, the reason that you run angled grip is because the main weakness of the Boss G is the fact that the reload time is so slow due to the nature of the gun, but also there's only two bullets, so you have to reload so much. So running the angled grip, reducing your reload speed, makes this gun a lot safer and easier to use. Because you're reloading so often, you have to ADS after you reload, which makes running a laser just naturally not a bad idea. Now, the reason I said you want a 1x scope or a 2.5 times scope is because if you run a 1x scope, it makes you ADS even faster with a 5% increase. Now, personally, I love the iron sights on Boss G. That might be a hot take, but it seems pretty clean to run, so I'll honestly do that over a 2.5 unless it's on one of those bigger maps that were aforementioned in the video. Moving on from the slug shotgun, let's talk about LMGs. For LMGs, you'll run angled grip for reduced reloads because they have some of the longest reload times in the entire game. You'll use compensator on most LMGs because there's a lot of side-to-side -side recoil or flash hider for some that don't like Finca LMG. And then the 1x scopes. Now because again, we're running the angled grip for reduced reloads and we're running compensator, there's not a lot that can reduce the vertical recoil. But if you run a 1x scope, it greatly can reduce the amount that the recoil is felt. 
and it also decreases the amount of ADS time. Now, because of the fact that you move 10% slower with LMGs with the new update, the reduced ADS time with the laser and with the 1x scope can make it a lot more forgiving to do this. Now, one thing I briefly wanted to mention about weapon classifications is they added a few. Namely, they added a new class called the Sniper class, purely for documentation purposes. But because it's a technicality, I'll go over it a little bit quickly. Just go over something that reduces the recoil, or in Glaz's specific case, run the suppressor if you're good at the game and you're going through his smokes. Now, for pistols, you're going to run muzzle brake and laser. If you're on your pistol, that means you've already dumped your entire mag on your primary, so worrying about them knowing where you are from a laser doesn't really matter because they already know where you are due to the fact that you just dumped an entire mag on them. And then muzzle brake, obviously, because it's a single shot weapon. Also, there's secondary shotguns. Secondary shotguns, you don't really have any attachment options other than running a laser or a scope don't run a scope you don't really need to just have no scope and get the faster ads time and then honestly i wouldn't recommend running a laser either just because it makes rotates a little bit easier to make now before we wrap up this video i need to address one thing very quickly i put the laser on everything except for like secondary shotguns but i put it on mostly everything now, I understand that some new players don't like this, because the laser exposes where you are if an attacker sees it, or a defender sees it in some cases, but if you aim your laser in a position where the enemy can't see it, it's never a big issue. You can just always aim it at the doorway that you're about to swing off of. And there's always a way to do it from whatever position you're in from wherever you are. You just have to find it, and if you can't, it's not the laser's fault, it's yours. One thing I also wanted to mention about the laser is it used to have an effect where if you ADS'd with a shotgun specifically, it would actually increase the choke of the shotgun, making it a lot more accurate. But with the laser update and rework, this is no longer the case. As you can see, the blue line is when I had the laser unequipped, and the orange line is when I had the laser equipped. The bullet pattern is still random, but the actual choke size is the exact same. So this fun little update actually is out of the game. And for that matter, I bet you the 1.5 headshot multiplier for lasers is probably gone too. But I still think it's worth running on most weapons that aren't secondary shotguns. But with that out of the way, my name's Algo. Check out this next video, sub to the channel down below, and I hope we'll see y'all there. Later.